now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the other coast of the United States where they call it the uh, left coast, I guess, is Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. How you doing? Good, good. You, uh, you sound chipper. Last time, we, last time we were talking about the Beatles and their concerts and... Uh, and I started to think, do you, where were you when uh, John Lennon got shot? Because I always remember. Where... Well, I was in San Francisco. Oh, you were out here by then. I was in San Francisco, and um, uh, it was a shock to me because I knew John. And uh, it got me so depressed that I actually i would come out to go to work for uh, KMEL. And uh, they, um, uh, I was so depressed by it that I... Um, that I that I oh I, I know what it was I had quit KMEL I told them I just I'm 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 homesick I have to go back to New York I just can't I can't stay here and then John was killed and I went back into my boss and I said do you mind if I stay because <laughs> I don't want to go back to New York now it just represents death to me and they said okay you can stay and by the way here's a raise. Wow. So, uh, actually, I made profit off of John Lennon's <laughs> death. The greatest negotiating ploy in your life. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I mean, they wanted me to stay. They didn't want me to go. So, you know, but I, I just decided that was my, my deciding factor to stay in San Francisco was that, you know, he died, he was murdered, and uh, the city didn't represent the same thing it used to represent to me, you know? So... Yeah. That's where I was when John Lennon died. I can't remember what the date was. So you probably do. Uh, I think it was it was a Monday. It was a Monday night because it was Monday night football. I think Howard Cosell came on and uh, announced it. Yeah, it should have been December eighth. You and your damn memory. God damn it! Yeah. You're amazing. Well, the funny thing was, I had just I was trying to get into stand up at the time. I hadn't quite. I hadn't done until March of eighty one, but. Mm. I'd met a few comics, including, remember Billy J? Yeah, of course. Yeah, he was, uh, and he told me that uh, the same thing that happened to you. He said all the comics were so depressed about Lennon's death, so it really hit him hard. Yeah. Well, I, you know what it was? I'll tell you what, what, what it was. Uh, it, wasn't, it was his death. It was certainly important to all of us. But because of the, the immense popularity of the Beatles and what they meant to a generation of people, this was a marker of a passing of time where you couldn't go back. You know, everybody said, oh, maybe the Beatles will get back together. Maybe they'll get back together. Well, once John died. Yeah. Stops that. It stopped, stopped it right dead in its tracks. Um, so, I, you know, it, and it, it, that, that was why I think we got very depressed over the death of John Lennon. I mean, uh, certainly because he meant a lot to us musically, but also as a road marker in time, he meant a lot to us. And once he was gone, that marker was gone, was erased. Okay, there was no going back to that road marker. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I mean, and it was a sad thing too because I mean, I I liked John; he was a decent guy, uh, and he had had a bad year um when he went out to california and when he and yoko split for a while and now things were all coming back together this was right after the year that he had spent uh kind of isolated at the dakota and uh, producing music and so on and so forth and getting back together with yoko and getting to know his child again and all those things and it was it was actually a happy time for him and he hadn't had a lot of happy times in his life. And wow. so 
for him to be shot at that point was so sad because he was, I think, so happy. You know, so... And uh, why did uh, Mark David Chapman went right? Was that the other guy? Yeah. And was he just nuts? Did, or was there any reason why he shot him? He was nuts. Just nuts. Yeah. I mean, come on. You got to be nuts to kill somebody in the first place. Yeah. But to, you know, to single this guy out and to hang around there, you're a stalker. And uh, he, oh, um, he was crazy. He was nuts. I think he finally got out of jail, didn't he? Because I was trying to find that out. I'm not sure if he is or not. Let me let me Mark David Chapman, right? The guy that the guy that shot Reagan, I think, got out. Yeah, Mark David Chapman. Uh whoops. Boy, I can't even spell anymore. Mark David. And he comes he's the first thing that comes up after you put in Mark David. And um uh, let's see here. Um, criminal penalty, 20 years to life. Uh, criminal status, incarcerated at Wendy Correctional Facility. So he's still in jail. Okay. He's still in prison. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he, you know, here's a picture of him. Yeah, I mean, he obviously he was crazy, you know. And um, I don't know. I don't know if you if they should have tried him. Uh, as a criminal, they should have tried him. They should have just put him in a nut house until he got better. Uh, but he uh, it, it really, boy, he has a picture of him now. He looks like you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, he, um, you know, he it, 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 he was just nuts. It was one of those just freakish things, you know. I mean, if John Lennon had shown up back to the Dakota five minutes later, all every, history might have been changed, you know. Um, but I mean, I was very, I was very grieved by it. I mean, because I knew them, and I especially liked Yoko, and um, uh, you know, it just it was it, it, so it was a passing of time. I couldn't, I couldn't go back, but it 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 really created a great deal of success for me because I didn't go back. Uh, and so I have to appreciate that, you know. So thank you very much, folks. I'll be here all week. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe that's 40 years ago. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. 40 years ago. God. that was I was 41 at the time, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, anyway, so... Uh, on, that, that, on that bright note. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I stayed in San Francisco, and I was very successful in San Francisco, and um, uh, it was, uh, it was a, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a mark po marking post in my life, at least, you know. So when you asked me where I was when John Lennon died, first I thought I hadn't quit, and then I suddenly remembered I had quit, and the reason why I stayed was because I didn't want to go back because of Lennon dying. Jeez. Yeah, um, but uh, you know, uh, uh, they, they, I I have uh, in one way or another uh, had an association with almost every one of the Beatles. Uh, I I oh, let me put it this way: I interviewed all of them except for Paul. And people say, "Well, how do you feel about that? That you didn't manage to get you know, collect them all, get Paul?" And I just said. I hated Paul. I couldn't stand his music. <laughs> you know, I mean, you could always, you always knew, even though it said Lennon McCartney, one person or the other wrote it. In the very beginning, they wrote together. But then, you know, the greatest Beatles, what I consider the greatest Beatles song of all time, John Lennon wrote, which is In My Life. I just think that's just an absolutely exquisite song. The lyrics are perfect. The mm -hmm. sentiment is wonderful. It's not treacle. If if Paul had written it, it would have been "I love you." That's what you, you're in my life, you know. Uh, but it, it, if you go back and look at those lyrics and listen to that song, what an absolutely perfect song, you know. So he was my favorite. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, George did some nice work, and Ringo, of course, uh, basically, he, he I don't think he ever wrote a song, actually. Uh, 
he had one song. I Did think, he write uh, one song? I don't even know if he wrote a song. I, I'd like to be under the sea. With the Octopus's the Garden. Octopus's Did he garden. write that? I, I think he probably didn't, but I think Did he got credit. Ringo Starr. Here, see, you can do this. Star. Well, here, I uh, hear. I'll do, what I'll do is I go. Echo. Did Ringo Starr ever write a song? Here's something I found on the web. According to wikipedia.org, Oh My My is a song by English musician Ringo Starr from his 1973 album Ringo. Okay, so he wrote Oh My My. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I love about... uh, We went out and we bought these echoes. I can only say it that way because when I say it, it then says, what do you want? You know, Uh, and... uh, I thought, you know, when I bought a Marjorie, went, oh, you know, come on, what are you, another, another gadget, another toy? She and I use this thing constantly now. It is so evolved that it's now, I, I don't have to go online anymore and say, is so-and-so dead, and what day did he die, and how old was he when he died? In fact, I asked this one yesterday. Um, Echo, at what age did Adolf Eichmann die? Adolf Eichmann died at 56 years old on May 31st, 1962 in Tel Aviv. See, I have no use for you anymore. I have no use for you anymore. Because I just found out it was 56 years. He was 56 years old. And it was March. When John Lennon died, too. I think it was December 8th, 1980. Oh. Echo, when did John Lennon die? John Lennon died on December 8th, 1980, at the age of 40 due to murder by gunshot. Okay, December 8th, 1980. He was 40 years old. That was right. See that? So I don't need you anymore. (laughs) But the question would be, he he died on December 8th, 1980. What day of the week was that? Now, here's where Bubbles is really good. That, of course, is a Monday. What do you mean, of course it was a Monday? You didn't even go through any any addition, subtraction, none of that. I mean, I w- you could be lying, and I would, but if I bet if I spent all the time going back to a calendar of that time, you'd be absolutely right. Or you can ask Echo. <laughs> all right. What was it, December 8th? Yeah. 1980. 80. Echo, what day of the week was December 8th, 1980? 80? Echo, what day of the week was December 8th, 1980? December 8th, 1980 was on a Monday. It was on a Monday. Okay. See, 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 you're, but I don't need you. Well, I think I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, fun with, fun with, fun with Alexa. Yeah. Well, it's depressing that 40 years have gone by. Shit, that bums me out. You, you it bums you out? Think yeah. about me as I look at, as, as in the mortal words of of um, John Cleese on my show, he said this. And I thought it was one of the best phrases I ever heard. I said, 40 years? Look at me with the grave ever yawning. <laughs> He said to me, as I grow older with the grave ever yawning, and I went, wow, <laughs> you know, perfect, perfect. That's a great phrase. Yeah. And, and so that's the way I feel. I wake up every morning with the grave ever yawning, you know. I mean, come on, I could die tomorrow. But then again, I could have died in my 70s, and I could have died in my 60s, you know. So here I am, 81, so why, what am I griping about, you know? Well, you do have longevity in your family. Except the fact that as I've gotten older and I'm a little weaker than I was, you know, I would love to do some traveling, but I can't because of this damn virus. You know, so we're well, stuck here. The, what about the, how's your vaccine? Did you get the vaccine? Yeah, I got, I got first shot. Yeah. you Not the second one, though. No, the second one is five and a half weeks from the first one. Because the, I, I don't know, I don't know why they went that long, but the first date I could get it was five, five and a half weeks, 
which yeah. pisses me off because everybody's saying to me, well, I'm getting my second shot now. And I'm going, yeah, yeah like, okay, Out fine. here they're getting them in two weeks. So. No, they're getting them in three weeks for Pfizer and four weeks oh. for Moderna. Um, but no, they're not getting them out in California. That's the big news. The second shot, people aren't able to get them. Well, the state can't do anything yeah. right. So. How old are you now? Uh, 67. Well, then you can get the shot. I can? I think you had to be 70. No, 65. Okay. So go look and sign up and go I, go get the shot. Although I heard the second one, the second shot, the one that makes you feel really bad. Well, I don't know. I haven't had the second shot yet, so I never know. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. So that's our time with Larry Bubbles Brown. C'est Gabney, la grande broquest never cam, Ricain. Par les radios comme vous n'en avez jamais entendu. Yeah, that's it in French for those of you who don't understand French. It's French. Okay? How are you, everybody? It's, it's the show. It's the, whatever this thing is. This, uh, this futile attempt we have at doing podcasting here. I, I don't know. Is this a podcast? This is a podcast. Yeah. I better not try and say that it's anything else. Also, my ears sound so tinny because these things are not plugging up my ears enough. Oh, boy. And I've uh, just been dealing with a whole bunch of medical things with the with the with uh, with our insurance and making sure it's okay. And I don't know. I just drive myself crazy. I, I, I should just leave it all up to Marjorie. That's, that's what we do. And... Uh, uh, she's uh, she handles all of it, so we'll leave it at that. Let me see here. Ah, and I've got I, I, I sore on my tongue tonight. Oh, it's one thing; it's another. I I I'm giving up all hope of any kind of decent health. Well, let me see here. Let me start admitting all the people that want to come on to this panel tonight. Okay. Um, there they here they come. Okay, all right. There you see, pop, see them all popping in there. There's Trucker Steve. He's out on the road. Uh, we got Jeffrey. Uh, he's up in the Connecticut. Uh, Charlie Wallace and uh, Dan Meyer. Hello, Dan. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Fine. Uh, uh, uh I'm. What? Uh, oh, I'm. I managed to uh, get the first shot today because I'm a teacher, so I got uh, on with that. So, which one did you get? Uh, the Pfizer. Mm-hmm. So I you know, back in, in uh, three weeks for the next one. So oh, see, everybody's up in, in in three weeks. Yeah, and I don't get to go in three weeks. You know, uh, I, well, four weeks actually. Mine's mine's Moderna. But it doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't, they don't, you know, I, now, I give up. You know, it's just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very frustrated by this whole process. What's, what's the difference between the two? I mean, probably technical stuff that I don't even know, but, you know. Well, let's see here. Uh, Moderna is uh, 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 more time between shots, okay? Mm. Uh, it's four weeks instead of. Uh, three, three weeks, uh, but in my case, it's four weeks and also another week and a half because for some reason they wouldn't schedule me earlier, all right? Welcome to New York, okay? Mm-hmm. Cuomo keeps mm-hmm. telling us how wonderful it is here, and it okay. sucks, okay? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Moderna is, I think, better than Pfizer. Uh, here's why. Moderna is good. Um, it will protect you uh, 50% when you get the initial shot. Okay. Uh, at uh, three weeks, uh, you get your second shot. If you're lucky, if you don't live in New York, you get your second shot. So that, that brings you up to 95%. The good thing about the Moderna is, is that once we get up to about three weeks, I have 80% efficacy. All right, and that that other mm-hmm. shot will take me up to the ninety-five. So you jump, you jump up a little faster, a little better, I think, with the Moderna. In I think um, initially, where Pfizer is like fifty um, percent, uh, I think uh, Moderna is something like seventy-two percent efficacy uh, after twelve days. So, 
Those are the current statistics. If you believe mm -hmm. any of them. Quite frankly, I think we're going to find we all want the AstraZeneca when it comes out. <laughs> you know, so, mm -hmm. you know. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh, well, these scientists know. Hello, everybody. No, they don't know I shit. Think... You know something? I don't think they know shit. I well, really don't. I think they know they can know, only... You know, they can only hypothesize at this point. They will not know. We are the lab rats in this thing. You know, yep. they, they didn't do the full testing that they would do. Otherwise, we'd all be dead before they got finished with it. Okay? That's right. Uh, uh, and, and so they had to go with something that they didn't have complete information on. And uh, so what are we? We're the lab rats. You know, if they weren't, if they didn't talk about it and talk about the you think you're more protected than somebody who has the Pfizer vaccine. Mm -hmm. If they didn't talk about that stuff, what would we talk about for a third of your show each night? No, oh, well, I don't. I, I, I <laughs> try. I try not to talk about this anymore because it just okay. gets me gravely upset. I got a new hat in the mail today. It says Israeli Army, Army. Mm -hmm. and mm. it's got a Star David hat on the side for the Israeli flag. Mm -hmm. I can't was I kind of like that. You know my you feeling think? about you know my feeling about the Israeli army. No, no, I don't. Fuck them. Okay. Yeah. Especially the women. Oh, especially, especially with your <laughs> ten inch dick. Well, yeah, Israeli women are hot, but then yeah. they, then they get to be thirty. Uh, yeah. I mean, I uh, uh, no, I'm just not a big fan of Israel or the Isra Israeli militancy. Okay. No, that's good. That's good to know. I'll make sure I hang the Israeli flag behind me. That's oh, good. oh, good, good. <laughs> you know, uh, listen. I'm an American. I'm not an Israeli, so I root for this country, and I don't but go around. You, root. you can root for them too. You're Jewish, right? No, I don't consider it the Jew. I don't consider it the Jewish state. I consider it the Israeli state. Uh, I think that to say it's the Jewish state is to say, okay, Alex, you then must agree with us because you're Jewish. And I don't agree with them on their politics. I think they have been very, very uh, terrible to, the, uh, to their neighbors, as it were. And, and I don't want to be uh, stuck with, uh, saddled with uh, the onus of their policies. Okay, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'm an American Jew, and I will... Root for America, you know. Okay. And uh, what happens to Israel? Uh, I I don't like a lot of the things they do politically. I think they're a bit offensive to me. Okay. Well, I'll agree with you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But well, it's nice that we have our own homeland. No, I don't think I, that's not my homeland. Come on. Do you see me <laughs> suddenly? States do you see me homeland? suddenly getting on a boat and going to Israel to go live there? You just said the United States is your homeland, and I was agreeing with yeah, you. But then yeah. you said, no, you don't have a homeland. No, no, I said, no, you said Israel is your homeland. Didn't you say that to me just now? Because that's no, what they always try to least, say. My exact words were, at least we have a homeland. Oh, you mean this one? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you meant at least we have a homeland, Israel. Oh, uh, okay. And I was going to start vomiting. <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you, uh... Huh? Yes, folks, I'm anti-Semitic. <laughs> you, know, you know what I hate about that is they go, if you don't like Israel, you're anti-Semitic. Yeah. It has nothing to do. It, Israel is a political state and has yeah. to be taken on its political laurels, okay? And the right. fact that you don't like Israel and don't agree with their politics does not make you anti-Semitic. Right? Right. Anti-Semitic is when you call me a Jew boy. Okay? All right. Or uh, what, what are some of the other terms we, uh, we have? Uh, uh, oh, you know, one I always liked is people would actually use this term uh, until they knew better. Uh, so I went to the store, and the guy Jewed me down. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I always said that, 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 one, that, that one always bothered me. It always got me. I, I think I've heard that. I heard that term before I even knew who Jewish people were <laughs> in, yeah. in my part of the country. Yeah, yeah. Are you, you're not Jewish, are you? With a name like Meyer, you could be. No, I'm No, I'm not. I am, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a German uh, 
come from a bunch of Protestant, because, long line of Protestant farmers. Because the other Meyer that calls us is uh, is a yeah. Jew, is a Jew, right? And I honestly feel that if uh, Adolf Hitler had met Phil, hmm. he would have stopped there and been satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you taking one for the team, Phil. Yeah, Phil. Oh, I, I think we missed Charlie's birthday last night. We did actually, but I didn't miss on contributing to his diabetes. Uh, I appreciate that. Alex. Oh, that that's wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So I was my little. I for, but I forgot to wish him a happy birthday. So yeah. go, go I shoot me. Al, Alex, I have wine, I have wine it, in here because we have no glasses. Huh? Hmm? I was gonna say, Alex, it didn't count. Cheers. Now that you announced your donation, you know, now you're all taking credit for it. Pat me on the back because look what I did. No, I'm not. I wasn't trying to a lot do of that. People donated. I didn't. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that I remembered it was his birthday because I I, I gave a donation to the to his GoFundMe for right. his birthday. I know. I know, and and as and as I said, that I'm not I'm a good guy. It was only a lousy. It was only a lousy oh. fucking ten dollars. You know, I mean, <laughs> I come on. About anything. You know, I'm not. Else. I'm not giving up my uh, my position as a cheap Jew. Not at it's all. Like trying to get blood out of a turnip, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And Charlie, what's your shirt tonight? Well, it's got an error on it. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah, the square root of minus four is actually two i. It's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. <laughs> Where do you find these things? Do you go, do you, I get them online. Are you so bored? Are you so bored with? Are jokes. you so bored with life? You go on to Amazon, just look for T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a life. <laughs> it's all fun Join and games until someone loses an eye. That's very good. That's very. One good. day you'll be able to wear them outside. <laughs> yeah, I, I wear them when I go to the grocery store for a half an hour or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, anyway, so you know, uh, yeah. So i now that I've I've gone into my unpopular politics, you know, about uh, about Israel. So when are you going to Israel? What? When am I going <laughs> to Israel? Oh, he to never Israel. said he would. <laughs> Do you know there are a lot of places I've wanted to visit my lifetime, and that is not one of them. You know, I, he'll, he'll go I right after twice. I go to Africa. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh, but 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 Charlie, that's your homeland. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cold. That yeah. is just so cold. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a word here. But my father knew a guy who worked with Louis Armstrong, and they went on a tour of the African countries, and when they first landed. When he first landed, Louis looked over at this guy and said, have you ever seen so many niggers in one place at one time? <laughs> so, right, just so, like this, you know, but I mean. Charlie, not only, does, not only does Alex have trouble with math, but with English too. He said, I'm going to say a word here, not a sentence. Yeah. No, I'm going to say a word here that I don't feel comfortable saying. Oh, I never oh, felt okay, comfortable no, saying that word, but but it was important to the story. Yeah, you know, because really, I mean, if you're a if you're a black man in America, and you go to Africa, you really don't feel that's your home. I mean, if you go come move to Harlem, you do, you know, because uh, this is kind of the the black homeland here. Uh, but, uh, you know, Africa is so far removed from the history of the black American that uh, going back there, yeah, it was sure interesting to go back there and see things and, you know. But, so I uh, think Charlie ought to come up with an old man Jew joke now. <laughs> I don't know any of those. An old man Jew joke? Sure. I'm sure. an old man sure. Jew joke in and of myself. You do not have okay. to tell one. <laughs> you know. So where is Robert? He's I did my homework last night and got and got he, and rewatched the he, show. He, he misses one night, and you're suddenly going, "Where's Robert tonight?" Well, because his question last night, when he said, "I have a question," and he he made a comment when we were talking about guns and Democrats, mm -hmm. and I did my homework for him, and he actually. Got what I said wrong. 
What? Ooh, what, he, well, what he, I can defend what he said, you know. Hold on just a minute. Okay. Um, Here's your script. I got nothing to do. Alan, don't tell us something you do during the day. Come on. <laughs> he's got, listen, he's out of, he's, I, I, he's, I he's, got it written he's, down. Re, Robert, he's retired. What else? Is, and, and there's COVID <laughs> on. What else has he got to do? That's right. Yeah. yeah. No, I thought it was. about guns than I do. I thought it was good. I know he was trying to push my button, and it just didn't. Work. What did he say exactly that pushed your button? Uh, well, he said he said um, Robert says uh, that uh, that I said that Democrats are not uh, they're anti law and order, which is not what I said. And it you said Alex, why don't they use rubber bullets? And I said, sounds like a Democrat asking. And then five minutes later, Robert says. Uh, you said, me, uh, that Democrats are anti Wait, we don't need the minutes from last night's show, okay? <laughs> right. right. So I wanted to be prepared because he, he had, not only is he 70 and getting up there. Well, I'll throw something at you. I'll throw something at you that I didn't throw at you last night and I should have. And, you know, after the show, okay. I say, oh, I should have brought that up. You know, when a kid, um, let's say you buy a kid a, uh, a slingshot. And then he uh, almost puts his eye out with it or somebody else's eye out with it. And what do you do with the slingshot? Tell you. you take the slingshot away from him, right? Yep. Right. Okay. You know, you talk about uh, uh, why we shouldn't, shouldn't uh, you know, put restrictions on guns. I think Americans have proven they don't know how to handle them. I mean, we have such a high death rate as a result of them, and they are used as there are more guns, I think, in America now than there are people, actually, yes. and 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 that is unseen anywhere else in in the world, okay, and and in countries that are democratic countries and you freedom to do all kinds of things, even like uh, Canada, where you're free to buy a gun in Canada, but the the amount of deaths from guns are are just you know. I think under a hundred or something like that a year, right? And it's in the tens of thousands in this country. So if we are not able to use our guns, we should have them taken away from us. You've been a bad boy. You don't get to play with your gun because you don't use it responsibly. What happens if you, uh, see in California, California is like Chicago, is like, uh, New Jersey is mm -hmm. like New York City. Mm -hmm. It's careful. A, it, I grew it's up a, in Chicago. It's a very what's that? I said, be careful. I grew up in Chicago. Oh, well, but I'm I'm going to talk about gun laws. Guns are, gun laws are are. I know that you grew up in Chicago, so gun gun laws are, um, very, um, conservative, very strict here in California. Some of the things that the Democrats want to do nationwide we already have in california like 10 round magazines like uh not buying ammo or guns at gun shows like doing a background check mm -hmm. part of the homework here let's talk about new york and california mm -hmm. so new york is a blue state so can you carry do you need a license to carry in new york yes your city yes in fact, you are not allowed to carry in New York City or have a gun in New York City. Without a, li without a license. Without so. a license, and I think you're not allowed to actually carry them around with you. I think there's this thing called the Sullivan Law that was uh, done now, years ago. So and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you blue state New York versus red state Texas. Same questions. So do you, do you need a permit in, in, in the red state of Texas? Yes. How about to purchase? Do you, do you need a permit to purchase in New York? Yes. In Texas? No. Do you need to register a firearm in, in New York? Yes. In Texas? No. Do you, are you right. allowed to open carry a gun, you know, like a cowboy mm -hmm. in New York? No. no. In Texas? Texas yeah, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Background mm -hmm. checks required in New York? Yes. Texas? No. Mm -hmm. Extent you can have as big a magazine as you want in Texas, but not, but not in New York. So the the, the blue states, California is a lot like New York. New well, York. I think Vogue is a much bigger magazine than Texas Monthly. 
you, you're not supposed to have that many magazines. So, uh, <laughs> so California is a lot like New like New York as far as mm -hmm. okay. So what's a, what's a, what's a, get to the point? What's the point? The yeah. point is Democrats, aka blue states, are a lot more restrictive with gun laws. Okay, so no, why? Uh, maybe maybe uh, then I guess well, I guess well, maybe well, Dem uh, Democrats are smarter. Yeah. What does what do gun laws have to do with being smart? I think uh, I think more, I I, I think the idea of even smart. having a gun is abhorrent to me, and useless, totally useless. You know, I how have many, never. How, how did the number of people shot in Texas compare to the number of people shot in, say, Chicago or New York? Well, so there's a lot less people. The murder rate it depends on the city. In, per capita, in, in, per in capita, yeah, per capita. So in Chicago in 2016 and 2017, they had more murders in Chicago than it, than mm -hmm. in New York and Los Angeles I, together. You, there's something else they had more than those states: poverty. Yeah. Okay. And I think poverty is a big contributing factor. I agree because uh, I agree. Uh, that most of the yeah. most of the gun violence in Chicago happened in South Chicago. As a matter of fact, yeah. I think we spend too South little right time. Gangs. We spend yep. too little time uh, looking at poverty when we talk about causality in this country of various things. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's a black white issue. I think it's a poor versus uh, uh, rich. Uh, uh, Disparity. Haves versus have nots. Yeah, haves versus have nots, and that a lot of the have nots are also white. You know, and we don't we we don't pay that much attention to poor whites because the as, as liberals, oh, we got to do something for the poor blacks. We got to do something for anybody that's poor. You know, anybody mm -hmm. lives in poverty or lives in squalor, and there are a lot of whites who live in squalor and poverty as well. Go down and to the boom. south, you'll find that. You know. Uh, a lot of the sharecroppers after the Civil War were white, yeah. you know. So I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's a, poor, a disparity between the poor and the, and the rich, and it's a very wide chasm. So I've made my case. Okay. Good night, everybody. I've been here well, all week. So okay, I'm going to give you a different okay. spin. Go ahead. How about if we? Force people to go to college <laughs> before they're allowed to get a gun. <laughs> that would be great, right? That way they yep. would be more educated. How about That's we just right. don't give them a gun? Yeah. You know. Well, in California, we yeah. require training. We require a background check. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Charlie. So, so no, you can finish your point. I just didn't want to. No, on. no, no. I, you had your hand up when I started to talk. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I Charlie. held my hand up. Well, because I thought of something. Charlie, quickly, talking. before you're an old man, before you forget it. <laughs> before no, one too. of the things that uh, Alan didn't point out is that there are a hell of a lot of guns in Chicago. Even though they have strict gun laws, there are a lot of guns in Chicago. And that's because five miles away across the border in Indiana, Indiana. It there are guns that you can buy guns for pennies. That's right. Pennies from anybody, from people on the street. But these yeah. are not law abiding for somebody citizens. From Indiana Chicago is wild west, basically. <laughs> these are not live law abiding citizens as a rule that are buying those five, five cent guns across the border. Those are gang members I know, in but South Chicago. Saying, if you, you look at the other countries like England and France and Australia and places like that where they have very strict gun laws for the whole fucking country, then you can't get a gun. So there are a lot fewer guns out there. Yeah. So in, in the case in the case of Australia, they learned a lesson the hard way. If you go back and look at Australia, I can't speak to, to England because I didn't haven't looked into it, but Australia <clears throat> took the guns away from everybody. Most civilians cannot own a gun, mm -hmm. a, a, a pistol. They can own a rifle or a shotgun. And after they took the guns away, the people that had guns were the criminals and the police and the military. And the crime rate in the big cities went through the roof when, and gun when, violence went through When the roof. was this? I remember in uh, 1996, there was a yeah. big uh, massacre 
uh, in Australia, and that's when they enacted a lot of those gun laws based on there that. There hasn't and I been a mass shooting since. Yeah. What what massacre is that, Dan? Tell us. It was in 1996. 1996. I don't know the exact uh, the yeah. exact details. I haven't done my research, as they say. So. Okay. <laughs> so you're just talking off the top of your head. You well, really don't I, know. I knew it happened. 1996, it was a thing. And I don't know, but it, I knew it was a big event. So I'll be okay. glad to Google it. Well, the Australian oh, port, sorry, it was yes. the port it was the Port Arthur massacre. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, target was uh, a Port Arthur historic site. It was a shooting spree, uh, and the weapons used Colt AR-15, and uh, I don't know what these are. There were 35 deaths, 24 injured, and it happened on April 26, 1996. I, I, I like Jeffrey's idea, and I think that he ought to send that to Biden. And you know that you have to have some college behind you before you can get a permit or train or anything mm -hmm. with a firearm. Mm -hmm. Let's get a smarter society. Even just like a two-year program. It, it, that's fine. So no, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not being sarcastic or anything. I think no, that's I was being realistic. You were being serious. I'm being serious. I think that's a I'm good serious. idea. Yeah. Yeah, but you could, never get that. you could never pass that with all the, you know, the gun rights, right winger, Christian wackos that, that feel that God <laughs> yeah. you know, gave us the right to fucking own as many guns as we want without anybody telling us, you know, how many we can own or anything. So you're talking about the Second Amendment, right? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, well, no, you know, I mean, you don't have to get rid of the Second Amendment, you know, and the Second Amendment all just says you can own a gun. It properly. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't mean you can own a fucking AR-55, you know, it doesn't mean you can well, own... regulated militia. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean you can own 2,000 fucking AR-57s or whatever the fuck they're called, you know? I can I mean, tell well, you're an expert at this. I'm not. <laughs> I'm right. just saying, you know, technically the co the Constitution... You know, you, you could interpret it to mean that you can only own a musket, you know, because that's all they had. Yeah, in those days. that's all they had back in that 1776. Mm. I've never had a gun. I've never been in a situation I needed. And I haven't either. You live in a safe neighborhood. Uh, I used to go up to San Francisco, right down the street from Larkin for about five years every single weekend. Oh, well, that's a horrible name. The Tenderloin and hang out. Well, well, John Larkin lives in the Tenderloin. John Larkin, and, I used to get Tenderloin and, all the time. And when I'm, I live in Harlem. When I, I first you know, moved I to, wait a minute, me, hold on a second. I, I live in Harlem. And when I first moved into Harlem, uh, this was still a dangerous neighborhood. As a matter of fact, on New Year's Day of the first year we lived here, a guy was shot to death at our front gate. Uh, wow. Who lived here? He was shot trying to head. get to you. No, shot in the head. Oh. Uh, and then two days later, across the street, somebody was shot to death. So, and at no point did I say, Marjorie, we better go out and buy a gun, or we better move into a nicer neighborhood. You didn't. No, say that. no. I said, you know, if we're going to live in this neighborhood. These things happen in this neighborhood. They don't happen they now. Happen in good neighborhoods too. They don't happen now. Uh, but they, they, uh, uh, oh, oh, hey, there was a lot of crime in this. I mean, for, did you ever see the movie yeah. New Jack City? Yeah, like sure. New Jack okay. City, there's a lot of crime okay. at that apartment. It, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, a lot of crime at our apartment house in New Jack City because that's right. our apartment <laughs> house in New okay. Jack City. And they didn't, said the meth house. And they didn't, they didn't portray it as a crack house because it wasn't, uh -oh. you know. Uh, and uh, it, uh, in fact, in the picture, you know, um, Wesley Snipes yeah. points at a window and says, this is where we're going to build our crack lab, and it's our kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was and, known. And for, how did he, he, he must have known that there was going to be Uranus in that kitchen. Yeah, Uranus, Uranus, not <laughs> Uranus. What is that? A combination of Uranus oh, and Uranus. uranium? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's my California yeah. accent. A uh, Charlie. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I I was born on the south side of Chicago. I grew up there. When I was a teenager in high school, mm -hmm. I was chased down the street by street gangs and shot at. 
And it never occurred to me once in my life that I need to go out and get a gun. Okay. Right. My mother also, she's a little older than you, was born and raised in South Chicago. So she had never had that experience. But obviously you have different experiences. You're 15 years apart from each other in age. I can't think of the high school that she went to. It was just in conversation. Might have even been the same, been the same high school you went to. I don't know. Well, I went to Holy Name Cathedral. No. That was no. No. in downtown went, Chicago. You went to public went school. To but uh, I, I, I like Jeffrey's idea. I think that's a great idea um, that everybody gets a little bit of smarts from college. It lear- you, you learn how to use your head a little bit, maybe a lot, depending on what you, courses you take. You might even learn math, Alex. That would count out most of the uh, the redneck gun loving idiots around here who never went to yeah, college. Too, yeah. yeah, but you know, but, um, yeah. But, but if they, but if it was a requirement, then they would ha- they, they would they would go to college. But, but, to college. Alan, besides being a police officer, is there any situation that you needed a gun? Yeah, it's, it's a it's a hobby. I shoot at paper targets. But but I know. But I'm asking you: Is there a situation that you needed a gun? No. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I, I'm trying thing. to figure out what your point is, though. If somebody broke into your house, uh, let, let let's let's just give a scenario that you could easily give to me. Somebody broke into your house, and in the middle of the night, you woke up, you walked downstairs, or if I don't know if you have an upstairs downstairs mm-hmm. house. You confront this guy, and you the guy's high on drugs, and you don't know what his intentions are. No, we, wait, a minute, we can, we, wait, hold on a second. We have eight people here. How many people have had anybody break into their home in the middle of the night? I I think once when I was a little kid. I never even heard of anybody breaking in the middle of the night of my friends or anything. Do, do you, does it, okay, now how many – anybody know somebody here who had somebody uh, have their house broken into in the middle of the night? Jeffrey? Nope, not when we weren't there. When you weren't there. Well, now there's one of the points I was going to bring up. That most of the time when people are going to rob you, it's because you aren't there. Yep. Well, technically, uh, robbery is uh, person to person. Burglary is what you meant to say. I know. Well, I'm sorry. I, 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 I am not steeped in the English language. So, so if somebody comes in your house and ha- you have no you have no idea what they're doing there, and they broke in, you have kids and everything that I don't have, Brian. Mm. Alan, I, I I don't have the time to go to the gun range to go and make sure I'm able to use that gun in the proper way when somebody breaks in in okay. the middle of the night trying to get my kids. But if you did, would you own a gun? If I knew how to hold a, if I knew how to shoot the gun and handle the gun, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I mean, so but, again, but, 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 but I don't we, see a situation that I. I don't Alan, see a situation that I've ever been in that I would need it. We've just okay. made it clear that most people are never going to have anybody break into their home right. while they're there. So you don't. You don't. Well, it's called. I mean, there's a there's a crime. It's called home invasion. And I know there's a crime yeah, called home invasion, rare. but we're saying it's mm. rare and that the amount of people who own guns in comparison to the rarity is completely out of kilter. And statistically, it's more likely for your gun that you have in your mm-hmm. house to shoot somebody in your house than it is to shoot somebody right. in the okay. accidental shooting. Yeah. And that's what I'd be more afraid of. Jeff? Right. Yeah, I, I want to say something. And, and the other day when we were talking about this, Pam was here, uh, and she was listening, and now she's in another room, and I think she's falling asleep. But most people anyway, do with this show. It's a very personal issue mm-hmm. that I want to talk mm-hmm. to you about. Mm-hmm. Her, her grandfather used to take the dog to walk around, mm-hmm. and he got concerned that somebody might see him outside walking with the dog and they might 
ask him for money or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So he, as an older guy, like your age. Well, thank you. Yeah, he bought a gun. Okay? And he never shot anybody. I, I don't know if he ever used it, on, like to even practice or anything. Mm-hmm. So next thing happens, he dies as an older guy. And his, Pam's dad got the gun as a guy who had already retired. Mm -hmm. He took the gun and he didn't like when he lost his, when he, when he retired, Mm -hmm. he was an unhappy guy. Mm -hmm. So he took the gun and killed himself. That's what happens. Sometimes. Okay, so there, there's a use for a gun. Mm-hmm. You know, all yeah, I'm, or a, yeah, or or a solution not to have them. Yeah, that's right. Had he not had the gun, Jeffrey, he probably yeah. wouldn't have killed himself that way. That, that's not right. At all. It, well, it, maybe not at all. Probably not at all. A convenient yeah. ability to do it. Okay, yeah. that's another point here. You know, yep. uh, it's not uh, particularly convenient uh, because there isn't a gun available. Uh, maybe he might stick his head in an oven, or maybe he might try and do it with a new, with a hanging himself. But the gun he has less time to think about it. You know, uh, to have mm-hmm. a second thought about it. Yep. And so, yeah, therefore, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, let me give you an example. Uh, when people commit suicide, and, and this is a known fact, that psychologically, the way in which they decide to die is the way in which they want to get even with the people who find them. Okay? It's a I'll show them kind of thing. So if you blow your brains out and then somebody happens upon your body, they're going to be scarred with that image for the rest of their lives. Yeah. yeah. Now, the best way to kill yourself if you're going to commit suicide, oddly enough, is to go up into the mountains where it's freezing, underdressed, and let yourself freeze to death. It's supposedly a very nice way to die, and it's a very decent way to die because people are not necessarily going to come upon a, a, a corpse that's riddled with a bullet blowing a brain out or a, a neck that's broken from hanging or whatever. So uh, the choice of a gun many times is, is used because people just want to get even with the people around them. Because yeah. somebody's going to have to find that horrible... I mean, I, I've never seen a head that's been blown off. I'm sure maybe our friend Alan has, but it isn't a pleasant sight, I would imagine. No. You know, no. So, I mean, um, uh, the, just the... Uh, but uh, there are just too many guns in this country. There are too many people okay. owning I'll guns. That. I'll buy. I'll buy that you know? with you. That there's too many guns in the country, yeah. and there's too many guns in this country. In gang and drug infested neighborhoods, yeah. mm. too many illegal guns. But that's but that's right. right. There you there you go. Illegal. And too, guns. too many guns in hands of people who are not mentally equipped yeah. to yes. use them. Properly. Well, in California, one of the things they ask you is, "Do you use marijuana?" And they do the and and stuff before you can buy a gun, mm-hmm. even if it's medical marijuana, which I happen to be for. But if you're a mar- regular marijuana user, mm-hmm. you cannot buy a gun in California. That's silly. Or they just say that they don't use marijuana. But and but, it, but it's okay if you drink alcohol, right? <laughs> That's silly. It's okay That's if you drink that alcohol. Silly. Everybody I know that uses pot is are, are the calmest person. They never right. get angry. But or, you know, or, or, you know, Charlie. Uh, Charlie, the, gun. the trouble is that mentality goes back to the forties. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, it's the, the uh, it's the reefer it's the reefer out. madness mentality, yeah. you know. Um, but I, uh, uh, I I just you know I um, I, I just you know I, I I'll tell you why I mean I've told this story before but I'll tell it again as long as we're talking about guns the reason why I guns scare the shit out of me I can't even hold one you put one in my hand I can't hold it just, well, somebody just, had a gun to your head once right somebody had a yeah. gun to my face. Mm-hmm. For about an hour, cocked, 
Jesus. Okay, it was a friend of I mine. He was a know. kid, and he oh. he was kind of a JD, a juvenile delinquent, and um, he uh, he was drunk. Okay, that made it even worse. If he were sober, yeah. he, I I wouldn't have worried as much about him handling that gun as drunk. And yeah, he just pointed it at me for an hour. And finally, at one point, I finally said, look, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me. I'm going. And I got up and left. And as I walked, I was waiting to feel a bullet in the back of my head, you know. Um, but after you've gone through an incident like that, you have a slightly different attitude about guns. Okay. Did you get in the military after that? Yes, I did. Yes, 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 I did. And uh, we, had we, we had to shoot rifles. We had to shoot rifles. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, oddly enough, uh, they, they said I was a marksman, that I was very good at it. I was terrific at it. Um, and uh, I'll tell you right now, I play video games where I shoot people all the time. Well, there you go. You know, I don't. But I don't like those video games. I love I them. They, I love them because I'm shooting. I'm not killing people. I'm killing pixels. You, you understand you know? that, but to an eight or nine year old. I don't buy that. No, me either. I don't buy that. I think I, 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 I think understand I, the difference. Those kids, they may or may not, but it's not a certainty either way. It's kind of like somebody we that's high up. Indians all the time when I was eight years old. We never yeah. shot anybody in real life. Yep. But I, uh, they, they qualified. They qualified me as a marksman in the, uh, it, it, you know, after just a short thing at the shooting mm -hmm. range, saying you're very good, and I just went, I don't know, I guess I just have a natural aptitude for it, but I never picked up another gun again. Okay, good for you. You know, you know uh, and I never felt they afforded me any kind of protection. I, I, I uh, practiced. I, I don't know if you have practiced martial arts, but uh, I practiced a martial art which I've found has been very helpful in a lot of situations. It's called run foo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feet don't fail me now. I'm just yeah, gone right. like a flash, yeah. you know. I mean, I just, I just, I just, I just don't understand the whole idea with guns. Oh well, I'm using it to protect protect my family. Listen, that gun may actually kill your family, you know. Good. Exactly. Yeah, and I, and you agree many times with me on this, Alan, because well, you're saying that that we have a lot of people who do not know how to use those guns and uh, to take care of them correctly and to make sure that they're put away, you know, yeah. and that there's yeah. where kids can't get to them. You know, yeah, well, yeah, I in, think in, you, you in California have... we we talked about this last night but in California they require you to give the the model serial number of your California approved gun safe or one of these biometric things mm -hmm. that's got to be also California approved so a kid can't get access to it. Right. Now there are a lot of stupid people in this world. I mean, you know, look at how many people voted for Trump. But and a lot of those people would leave a gun just laying around loaded. So Okay, but who are you more worried about? Are you more worried about that mythical robber that's going to come in in the middle of the night and rob you? Or are you more worried about a lot of these militias, uh, these people that go crazy and go shooting up uh, areas and so on because uh, they, they, they go crazy? Are, are you more, I'm more worried about them and about their ability to get guns. I mean, right. I think I think when we talk about uh, the danger to the you don't, public, you don't want a gun to defend yourself, Alex. It's uh, a militia. I, I don't think that a gun would defend me against a guy up in the Mirage Hotel from a high window with a sniper's rifle. Okay. Yeah. Well, a gun, a gun, a gun would actually stop the guy from shooting. But, no, maybe if somebody got After up there killed, eventually. But I'm saying if I was down I, there I, being I, shot I at, that, that gun me. wouldn't do me bupkis. Yeah. Uh, y yes, uh, uh, Dan. Yeah. Well. The, yeah. Another another part of the scenario is that, um, for example, like around here, there's talk of like arming teachers and arming uh, school employees, and people. I think people have this mentality like, if I have a gun, you're automatically like Bruce Willis and totally confident with it and everything. I'm. I don't totally mind people having guns but just have a good amount of training if you're ever gonna own a gun well you know what, what i uh, what i think we should be reminded of is parkland uh school yeah. down in florida where they actually had a guard there with a gun 
Right. Who ran away. Who ran, Who away. ran away. Yeah. Yeah. So, ran I mean, fools. you know, arming that teachers. didn't do any good running away. Yeah, but arming teachers are, are you know. Uh, and then you get, you know what you're then? You now you've got an arm teacher who's crazy who then shoots up his class. You yeah. know, it's 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 not too um, soon before that eventuality tr- happens. Trust trust me. I I'm I'm a substitute teacher. You want to kill those I, kids I, every day you're teaching them. If I if well if I <laughs> if I had access to a gun, yeah. I, I you know I I'd think about it. You know, <laughs> you, I, I remember you know, some of my I like, teachers. I like I, I can get these happen. kids to shut yeah. up right now. <laughs> yeah. I had some old teachers back then, and I wouldn't want any of them to have a gun. Yeah. So yeah. there's there's a lot of people that I know it or I've come across mm-hmm. that I wouldn't want to have a gun either. But there's a lot of good people in this country that I don't have a problem with, with them having a gun. I think proper training is important. I think a background check is important. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of states License. like that. Texas, sure? for instance, where you walk into a store, plunk down a thousand dollars, you buy a semi-automatic uh, M16 type assault weapon, whatever you want to call it, um, and you walk out of the store with a box of ammo, and you're on your way to uh, hunt, shoot paper targets, or kill your family, whatever. <laughs> and that's unfortunate. And I think the laws ought to be. Uh, like California, like Chicago, like New York, where you have to go through a background. I even like Jeffrey's idea of thinking outside the closet, and I think they're outside of the whatever it's called. Box. box. Outside the box. I think closet, box. You don't think outside the closet. (laughs) The closet is where you go when you're homosexual and want to hide it. I think having a license, like like driving a car, like having trained and being a licensed owner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, I want to bring up something here. It's kind of interesting. Uh, our uh, our former president, uh, what was his name? I forget now. Uh, <laughs> Richard Carter. Nixon. The name that shall not, not be mentioned. Yeah, well, tr- Trump, President Franklin Trump. Um, he, uh, the my union, SAG AFTRA, uh, has said that they sent him a letter saying we are. Eight, 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 Letting Thinking you go from our you membership of our union, yeah, uh, because uh, we don't like uh, the things that you've been doing recently, and so on. I don't know what the verbiage was there. Anyway, they kick him out of the union. Uh, part of the reason they said uh, in the aftermath of uh, of them getting rid of him was because they put that members of SAG after are also journalists, and they put journalists in really the line of fire. They made their lives much more dangerous. They've had their lives threatened. Uh, Absolutely. You know, they've been pointed out at rallies and so on, and they just said the way the membership has been treated under this president and the danger they've been put in is reason for us to get rid of him from the union. Mm. Well, he wrote them a letter back. Yeah. (laughs) And I want to read you this letter because it's so egotistical. It says... I write you today regarding the so-called disciplinary committee hearings aimed at revoking my union membership. Who cares? While I'm not familiar with your work, I'm proud of my work on movies such as Home Alone 2, Zoolander, and Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps, and television shows including The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Saturday Night Live, and of course... One of the most successful shows in television history, The oh Apprentice, boy. just to name a few. <laughs> I have also greatly helped the cable news television business, said to be a dying platform without much time left until I got involved in politics and created thousands of jobs at networks such as MSN, uh, MSDNC, uh, fun? Uh, uh, yeah. Fake News CNN, among many others. Which brings me to your blatant attempt at free media attention to distract from your dismal record as a union. Your organization has done little for its members and nothing for me besides collecting dues and promoting dangerous un-American policies and ideas as evident by your massive unemployment rates and lawsuits from celebrated actors who even recorded a video asking, why isn't the union fighting for me? By the way, that has to do with our 
SAG after health plan. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these, however, are policy failures. Your disciplinary failures are even more egregious. I'm glad he had a new big word that big. Oh, yeah. I no longer wish to be associated with your union. As such, this letter is to inform you of my immediate resignation from SAG AFTRA. You have done nothing for me. Uh, Signed, uh, Donald. Well, so I, I think what you've proven is you do have a grip on the English language. And you are trainable on mathematics. Yeah. Now let me let me let me let me tell you. Uh, they they then wrote him back, and you know what their letter read? Thank you. That's right. <laughs> That's all. That's all. That was it. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you know, I mean, of course, nothing surprises you with Trump, but it's like, who? No, it's but it's like you um you think that you know you think that maybe he's gonna rise above something like that yeah but yeah. he never does no he had to he also had to give a list of his credits you yeah. know yeah. Yeah. Right. and I'm sorry if I'm giving a list of my credits on a serious issue like this I don't think home alone 2. yeah no. lost in New York is uh is is a major credit. Especially all he was was an extra. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't an extra. He had one scene, you know. I know, but he yeah. but it was, he was, it was a cameo. Like, he was a cameo. It yeah. was a like joke. Oh, look, words. it's that done. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder who wrote it for. And the most, and the, and the most, one of the one of the biggest shows in the history of American television. <laughs> that's yeah, gonna yeah. that's gonna be a big blow to Roots, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a big blow to. Uh, uh, American Idol, which was a much bigger show than that, and his show, in fact, was only a big show for I think one season, and then it started going downhill from there. You know, uh, but well, I mean, the letter is so egotistical. You know, I mean, make a case for yourself. Say, hey, I'm a member of this union. I've been a good member in good standing, and because you don't agree with my politics, there's no reason for you to, you know, blah 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 blah. But no, he never can make a rational argument about anything yeah. it's all personal right and um I, I, so i'm proud of my union for doing what they did on the other hand he is right about the union being sued so you know yeah. well, maybe you wrote it for today trump is now talking about moving to austin texas oh no, don't but, say that uh, Austin, texas Why <laughs> come there? on you just said that to get charlie in an up yeah <laughs> it's true yeah. i'm just joking yeah, um, well, yeah. you should have seen the look on Charlie's face. Yes, D Dan Me Dan Meyer has a pithy comment. Yes, Dan. Uh, well, um, one thing I was going to bring up, uh, you know, th they were talking about if he was going to come and testify at the impeachment trial, whether he would or wouldn't, and I think the House managers wanted him to, mm -hmm. and then he declined. Yeah. And um, but I was thinking, why would you want that fucking circus that he'd fucking bring with him? You know, why would anybody want that? Well, but I mean, he, would, under oath. He, can't he would be under oath and he can't help himself. No, I, I, I think, I to be know, honest with you, is he bringing hmm. with him? He's going to bring more insurrectionists, big mobs from everywhere. Hey, but Dan, we, no, he'll we bring, talked about that last night. No, worse yeah. than insurrectionists, he might bring Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, that's another story today. Is Rudy Giuliani? There's a radio my station. Guy. The radio? No, that isn't the my pillow guy. <laughs> He's a lawyer. Yeah, I know. I was just saying. Cause well, he is a lawyer, but my not pillow guy. very long. Yeah. Here, here uh, about the, uh, the anyway. Dogs. Anyway, wait a minute. Let's take it one one at a time here. <laughs> okay. Uh, he uh, he does a show every day here in New York, five days a week on WABC. A once great radio station that now wallows in obscurity. And uh, he has a show, an hour show on every day. I've never listened to it. I was, when I looked at the station's lineup, uh, I was appalled to see that he even had a show, you know. And what the ABC, what WABC decided to do was because of the current suits that are out against Giuliani on two fronts, one from Dominion for uh, $1.5 billion, 
and the other mm-hmm. against he and Fox and uh, Friends <laughs> and, you know, all that for uh, $2.5 billion from Smartomatic voting machines. Who came up with that name? Smartomatic. <laughs> Jeez <laughs> almighty. I mean, I would laugh if I had to read that. Uh, a genius. Yeah, a genius. <laughs> New a genius. We'll, I have an idea. Smartomatic. We'll call it Ron Smartomatic. Ron. It came from yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you keep it's talking nice. about it, and they're getting more publicity every time. Yeah, yeah but yeah. anyway, uh, look, are they going to sue me for saying it's a stupid name for the company? I could have come no, up. No, they want more publicity. No, that's true. They don't care right. about it. They say, they say, say it every true. day. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, anyway, uh, they started every day running a 90-second disclaimer at the beginning of his show, saying nothing on the show should be taken as truth. It is only the opinion of Rudy Giuliani and a lot of his whatever has been disputed. I don't have the actual script here. I wish I had a recording of it. Giuliani goes ballistic. How dare they do this to me? Well, these guys just don't want to get sued. Right? Mm-hmm. They just got their little, this guy, the guy who owns the radio station, owns a bunch of supermarkets. He's the only independent radio owner in New York City, and I don't think he wants to get sued for $1.2 billion, right? right. So he yeah. does the disclaimer. Although I have news for him, I don't know if he's talked to his lawyers, that disclaimer might not be you know, enough. Yeah, cut, cut the, cut the, Water? What's the word I'm looking for here? <laughs> anyway, uh, and then and then we've got over at uh, CNN, you can all be happy for this, conspiracy believer and ardent supporter of Donald Trump, Lou Dobbs, mm-hmm. who once used to have a great reputation, he used to be over at CNN and so on, has yep. been fired CNN. by Fox. They've canceled yep. his yeah. show. He got yep. fired. Gone? So you know what happens to all these outfits that, suddenly go, oh, well, we're going to make money off of this, okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, they're all running for the for the hills, yeah. you know? We've got to do a sc- disclaimer in front of your show, and we've got to get rid of Lou Dobbs, and I'll bet you Hannity and I'll bet you C- Tucker Carlson or two of the other people are getting sued will probably get fired. So, oh, I, you I, know... So, I'd so love I, to see Hannity get taken yeah. down. But I really hope they nail Fox because Fox has made a fortune off of this kind of diatribe over the years. You yeah. know, and what I think is kind of disgusting is they won't stand by a Lou Dobbs at this point. They just want to save their own ass. You know? right. They're so, already getting sued because of him. So right. They have to and then over at OAN tonight, they are running a documentary yeah. Produced a three hour documentary produced by the My Pillow guy. Absolutely. About the conspiracy. The <laughs> about the conspiracy. <laughs> he huh? He paid about... them to get that on there. So technically, it's an infomercial. Well, technically, it's an infomercial, but you know something? You can't use that as an excuse. Maybe you no, can give it a, as a little bit of an excuse. Yeah. But, you know, you, you've got a, a station there. You're responsible for what information goes out over that station. Right. And, and if, I, if, I run, if I run an infomercial for some kind of thing and then it turns out to poison people and kill them, I'm still responsible because I ran it. Even if I said on the disclaimer, we do not uh, uh, verify the accuracy of this product or whatever. Right. Um, Steve, you've been, quiet, you've been quiet all night. You're there. You're, uh, you're at a truck stop. Um, I wanted to say, ask something. Um, you guys hear this uh, 95-year-old woman in Germany who is uh, going to be on trial for... She was a secretary during one of the uh, she was camps at a, in during the war. Yeah, I read that, yeah. Uh, okay. I wanted to ask Alex and Alan, what do you... What's your opinion on that? Well, I'm not. I'm not. Fam- I'm not familiar with the situation. I'm surprised that this, after this long, she was time, a secretary for a commander at uh, one of the prison camps. Yeah. Yeah, but she she was a teenager, so she's being tried in juvenile court too. Is she really? What? Yeah. No. Ninety-five yeah. years old now. Oh my yeah. God. And they're going to try her for ten. Was it ten thousand murders? Something like that. Well, Some the, fucking insane number. You well, know, if somebody was in the guns, they could just shoot her and forget I, the trial. I just got through watching. I actually a, don't know anything about I, it. I just got through watching a documentary about Adolf Eichmann, 
And Eichmann used the defense that he was only following orders, that, yeah. you know, he, he, he did what he was told to do. Uh, and his only job, he didn't go and, you know, pump the gas into the into stuff, but he, he, uh, he ordered it. You know, he ordered the... Uh, he, and he, he was like the accountant. He was the accountant, basically an accountant who got to be a very fancy accountant and came up with a scheme uh, to kill uh, Jews in mass in a mass number. Here's what happened. Uh, they uh, The Germans uh, marched into Poland. They took over Poland. Well, where before they were just trying to get rid of the Jews, get them to leave the country, okay? And they'd, take, they'd give them to any country that would take them. At this point, they were getting too many Jews than they knew what to do with, so they had to come up with what they called the ultimate solution to the Jewish problem, and that was how do we mechanize the killing of these people and, and you know, do it like an assembly line? And that's what he came up with. Okay, so now he used the argument, well, I was only following orders. Well, the question would be in the case of this woman, I mean, if she was only a secretary... And she was how old at the time? The teenager? Teenager, yeah. yeah. Uh, and she's now ninety-five. Yeah. You know, yeah. by the time you by the time you find her guilty, she's probably gonna die. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, what do you think, Fair Alan? Question. What do you think, Alan? Uh, no, I, well, I don't know much about that. Mm -hmm. About that personally, I like what you had to say, Alex, about that. Yeah. But. I, I don't know how many people here have have children other than uh, Jeffrey and and uh, Brian, mm -hmm. and I haven't heard of other people here. Would you want your children taught by somebody that is that drinks a lot? Maybe maybe is an alcoholic. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Smokes marijuana a lot, mm -hmm. and is willing to kill his kids in class if he had a gun. Would you want that person as a teacher? Uh, how, how, how sexy is she? Okay, there you go. Now, okay, we're getting now I'm the, asking the important now. question here. Yeah. Now, uh, why do you ask that question? It's a very yeah. odd question. Yeah. Well, because, 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 and I'm not, not looking to pick on or anything, but you, you said the other night when it, when it's on the internet, it's on the internet forever. Whatever we say, anybody can see. And I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. But we have somebody here sitting here in the group that's smoking marijuana, drinking beer, and talking about that if he had a gun, I knew it was hypothetical if he had a gun, mm -hmm. he would kill he might kill all the kids in his class because they're little brats. Mm -hmm. well, he <laughs> all the kids. What? Yeah, what? Well, uh, what are you gonna ask what would my responsibility no, no, be? He's talking about me, but I don't know what your even well, I'm just, I don't I'm, know. I, I'm, I'm just, you know, I mean, you're trying to make some point that I'm trying going to shoot kids in my class or something, or what? Well, you said that. No, he didn't so say that. If he I, had a gun. Was I serious? He had a, I understand that. He was, I saying that, that as a, he was saying that as a joke. If I, 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 mean, if, I mean, I would rather not have a gun in the room, so there's absolutely no chance of that happening. But yeah, but I just I just wanted to get your do you, okay. do, but just quickly because I mean, we're I'm, running we're running out of time here. Alan, do you feel the teachers should carry arms in class? No. Okay, good. I didn't. I, yeah, that's I, true. you. You know, I always the thing I like about you is you're reasonable. You know, it was the thing I like, I like about somebody, Pat, you know. about Patrick who doesn't call very much lately because yeah. he's afraid I think that we're going to get on his case or something. No. But but he, uh, I always liked him because he was very reasonable, you know. I didn't agree I with him, reasonable. but he was reasonable. Yeah. And I that's good. What, what, wait a minute, what, were you getting snacks? We're almost over here. You don't need yeah, snacks. Yeah, these are like heroin. Peanut butter pretzels. Oh, jeez. Like heroin. Oh, no. And if you drink them with oh, beer, it's like crack. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I I've never seen heroin. heroin. Hey, did oh, you God. hear? And this stuff is 100% What What did you, you say, so Brian? Beer. David Hogg, David Hogg, he wants to. Oh yeah. wants to do a pillow, a pillow company to put yes. the my pillow guy out of business. Yeah, yeah. he's a guy yes. from he's a guy from the from the high school. 
Uh, shooting, yeah, from, from the shooting from got Parkland High by School. Marjorie. And he says he's he is starting a pillow company to go he into He said it was a joke at first, and then people started talking to him, him and now he's taking this seriously, yeah. Yeah. The I'll only, buy one. Yeah. Who who told me <laughs> that they had a my pillow and it's a piece of crap? Uh, sure they are. I, I don't think, know, but that's what I've heard too. Somebody was on the I, show. I said one. last night that I have my pillow, and they're the best pillows I've ever slept on. Oh, that's what you said. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what he said. But yeah. somebody. But then you said that was before, that was before this this guy became an idiot, and I said, yeah, yeah. I I'm not sure he was an idiot at the time he made your pillow. Well, you too. wouldn't buy him because you don't want to make him rich at this time. Yeah. Uh, he, he could put out the best pillow in the world, and you wouldn't buy it after all he said. You know. No, that's uh, that's correct. Yeah, that's, uh, that's and, correct. and that's a logical place to you know position. So Dan, yourself. I have a question. Okay. You said that your marijuana is legal. I, I'm yes. assuming in your state it's legal, so you can smoke it on school grounds. No, no. I'm not going to smoke anything on school grounds. I don't okay. think the use of alcohol is permitted on school grounds. Right. Okay. No, but on the not, show, it's okay. And this is at Delta 8, like I meant. I well, has he been smoking day. pot on this show? I didn't know that. Yeah, you, yeah. a few minutes ago, he lifted the pipe after he finished his, his can of Coors. Oh, look at his face, Alex. It wasn't Coors, it was uh -huh. What do you mean, look at his face, uh, <laughs> Steve? He, he's clearly a stone. Yes, thank you. How dare you? <laughs> it's a, I have no problem with, with medical marijuana, Dan. I mean, uh, actually, a lot of... Cops don't have a problem with it, right. providing you don't get stupid. Well, on it. I don't. Getting, I don't. Uh, I, I, you're I, not getting stupid. I, I don't on like it. medical it's marijuana. Insane. I don't well, like medical well, marijuana uh, because I want to use the real stuff. You know, I don't want to have to be. I don't want to have to be dying of cancer before I can use well, my drug of preference. Of, okay, like you just your marijuana like, stuff with pussy hairs, don't like, you? Like yeah. Alan just said, the uh, like I'm not getting stupid on it. I'm, you know, this is that. Well, don't summer. don't go that far, Dan. <laughs> well, as I'm as stupid as I always am. Yes, right. But, okay, I'll buy but that. What I'm saying is, you know, it's that Delta Eight that I was talking about, and it comes from hemp. It's a whole big, you know. There's so many compounds in marijuana. You know, you could have a chemistry degree and not figure it all out, but yeah, um, yeah. this Delta Eight THC, it is more of a relaxing high than a head high it's not you're not all uh, you know you are i still got pretty much most of my wits about I, it. yeah you do you actually do, huh? yeah you do yeah but i feel really relaxed in my yeah chair. well i don't even, i won't even smoke pot before i do a show uh, well I thank just, god for that well <laughs> We'd be taking temperatures all night long. Oh, shut the fuck up, yeah. will you? Jeez <laughs> almighty. Yeah, if I was remember, on regular marijuana, I'd be dope. Remember the Jews here, you know, the, the, yeah. the flag. <laughs> better get it off there, otherwise I might get blocked or something. Hey, listen, uh, there's our theme song. And uh, it's been a kind of interesting night. God damn it, we didn't talk about we didn't talk about COVID and we didn't talk really about Trump except for that letter, which I thought was important for you to hear. Hey, yeah, that little kid didn't call in. Yeah, no Ryan. Yeah. And, and no Ryan and no Robert. Row. But uh, the rest of you are just fine. Jeffrey, good talking to you. I think the kid was pissed that Brian was using this. Have a nice weekend. Yeah, you too. Uh, same to you, Charlie. Have a nice weekend and happy birthday once again. How old are you now? 71. 71. Uh, Phil Meyer. <laughs> Phil Meyer. <laughs> Hi, Phil. Dan Meyer, thank you so much oh. for being with us. And of course, Trucker Steve and his dog, uh, uh, Rocky. Uh, where is Rocky? That dog, what, what do you He's do? High off marijuana. Yeah, I'm saying is, like, dog's high on marijuana. <laughs> there he is. Mm -hmm. He's asleep. And uh, hey, uh, Brian, thank you so much. Uh, Alan, always fun. And, of course, John Larkin, you're terrific, too. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Oh, what's that? Oh, what, is that the team that's playing this weekend? Was that the Buccaneers? What is that? The Roosters? I don't know. What is that team? Anyway, we'll see you, and uh, everybody, uh, if you're going to have yourself a uh, uh, one of those uh, Super Bowl parties, uh, don't have one.
uh, just have it virtually, okay? Anyway, that's it for tonight with our citizen panel. Next is uh, Jack Bishop. He's going to be here with his thing called The Intersection. I'll be here again uh, on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, and we'll be back here Monday, actually, at 4 o'clock with the uh, Monday pop-up. Then we'll be here Tuesday at 10.30. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, wear a mask and be safe out there. Bye-bye, everybody.